Now let's see another important feature of the Hyper DVG, which is the emulating debug register. This is this one is really interesting. I really love uh, this feature of the Hyper DVG. You probably used Hyper uh, hardware debug registers. Uh, this is exact, uh, exactly the same functionality for the memory monitor or monitor command of the Hyper DVG. In the hardware debug registers, you put monitor on a special boundary of the memory, like two, one, two, four, or eight bytes of the memory by using hardware debug registers. And whenever any uh, access to those memory, like uh, memory access to, do, uh, to that address, a read or write happens to the that special address, then uh, the DB or debug uh, interrupt is invoked and you will be notified that something is changing in that address. It's exactly the same for Hyper DVG. Hyper DVG monitors a range of address for any reads, writes, or a combination of read and writes. Hyper DVG brings it uh, as events. As it's an event, you can write custom scripts, create logs, or change the system uh, state, or do whatever you want with the script engine. Another thing is that you can change the results. For example, uh, if something happens in the user mode or a kernel mode a code and uh, for example a function tries to read a special value or change a special value in the memory then you can just stop changing it like just uh, ignore the changes that are applied to that address and the prog the program won't know that it's changed for example you change an uh, the pro program tries to change a special address the simple move instruction and then you will ignore it and the program won't know that it's uh, that it's ignored that its changes won't apply but the thing that makes hyper dvg unique and usable usable in this uh, case is it uh, is that it doesn't limit the count it doesn't have any limitation about the count and the size and uh, as you know uh there are only four debug registers and and, and as i mentioned the size is limited to one, two, four, or eight bytes. This is not really usable in most of the scenarios because uh, most of the time, if you want to debug a structure or if you want to uh, find the functions that try to modify or read from a structure, then the structure is uh, most of the time more than eight bytes. So it's uh, it's not really usable to use these debug registers for those functions. But in Hyper DVG, you don't have any limitation in the count and in the size. And also, only four debug registers are available in in the system. But uh, you don't have any limitation about the count in Hyper DVG's monitor. Everything here is implemented in an EPT level, like we modify the uh, kernel page level. Uh, routines to export these uh, events in Hyper DVG. And some of the use cases for these uh, monitor command is that you can, as I mentioned, you can ignore the memory writes or uh, ignore or read something else from the memory. You can also change the memory content without modifying the memory, which means that you can simply change it. And whenever the program tries to read that special address, then you show something else. And also, uh, this is also true about both user mode and kernel mode. Uh, so this is a really important command in terms of uh, reverse engineering. As you can see, monitor or bang monitor extension command is used for simulating hardware debug registers. For example, uh, in the first example, it's a monitor command on which only interest uh, on uh, read attempts uh, to this <coughs> sudo register. Proc uh, points to current process e process. Uh, we only add plus ff to uh, to the e process, so we want to intercept any reads uh, starting from current e process to e process plus ff in hexadecimal format. The second command is also a monitor. At this time, we are interested in, uh, on both uh, <coughs> reads and writes and. Uh, it starts from this address and ends on this address. 
the second command use the the script engine only for uh, this time only for writes and the range uh, differs from starting from this address to this address and in the script it shows the context and the, the context for one byte in this range of memory is modified and uh, context shows the target byte uh, and the last one uh, is the monitor command uh, interested in writes uh, for this range of memory uh, and this time we check whether the context is target memory address equals to this address or not and if the address that is being modified is equals to this address then we will change it to something else we will change it to this value this uh, 64 bit hexadecimal value and after that we ignore the memory right don't worry about it uh, event c we will uh, explain this command in the future part uh, this function actually mm -hmm. so let's see a demo or uh, let, let's test one of these commands for example this one uh, is a good example uh, and, and instead of it i try to write uh, proc plus ff in hexadecimal format so uh, if anybody uh, in the entire kernel or even in the user mode uh, i mean uh, generally it's also usable in user mode but if anybody in the kernel wants to uh, write on the e process starting from the starting point and uh, to uh, this amount of bytes then uh, we are interested in intercepting it so let's run it on hyperdvg I paste it here. After continuing the target uh, debuggy, you can see that there are some locations that try to write on this uh, uh, this address. So let me just intercept some of them. For example, this address writes to a memory address between the range that we specified. So let's see what are this address it uh, located at ntx acquire spin like exclusive at dpc level so what's the other address uh, it's on ntx release the spin like exclusive from this dpc level uh so now now let's just uh clear this event and uh this time we are we gonna intercept only reads not writes if we want to intercept both read and writes we should specify rw but this time we are uh, interested only in uh, reads so let's do it again these are the memory addresses or these are the rip addresses that try to actually read on this address let, let me let me uh, change the script again As you can see, uh, uh, these addresses try to write, uh, try to read from an um, e process of the current process. Let's see some of them. For example, this one. Is located on NTPSP reference CID table entry. Another one, NT uh, KI uh, stack attached process. Another uh, feature that uh, recently added to the Hyper DVG is uh, its ability to uh, intercept any execution in the in different pa uh, pages uh, or in other words. Uh, the monitor command for HyperDVG now supports X attribute or execution attribute. And right now you can intercept any instances of reads, any instances of writes and uh, executes. Uh, 
uh, you can uh, detect whether something uh, is executed in your target page or in your target uh, range of addresses in both kernel mode and user mode for example you can uh, detect whether your module your p section got executed or not uh, or uh, you can intercept its context uh, uh, and uh, you can even block the execution so here is some of the examples for example uh, in the first example the monitor rwx is used which uh, monitors and uh, uh, and halts the debugger pause the debugging in case of uh, any read write or execution in this address range another instance is wx uh, which uh, uh, stands for write and execute uh, if any uh, write or execute happens uh, in this range then this event will be triggered but it won't uh, get triggered by any write or if you just want to intercept uh, executions you can also use the x uh, without uh, r and w uh, so in this uh, example it says that uh, uh, detect the execution from uh, starting from this address to this address and uh, as a message uh, just write here that instruction is executed on this address uh, which is the context uh, points the address that got executed and also another example is the same uh, but we used event sc or event shared circuiting uh, to block the execution don't worry about uh, this uh, event sc we will talk about it later but just keep in mind that this function can block the execution uh, and won't let the target to be executed so let's just see an example Uh, I just uh, prepared uh, a very simple hello world application that uh, that is uh, in an in an infinite loop uh, and this uh, application just shows hello world messages and sleeps for two seconds so let's return to hyper dvg and uh, connect uh, to the uh, debuggy I run from here. Uh, this binary file uh, is compiled and it's now available here. So I just uh, run it. Uh, we can use the data start command, for example, to run it. Uh, let's run it with the data start command. And now we reach, uh, we have to press uh, G to, we are in the context of this process but uh, we can uh, run G to detect uh, uh, the entry point of this process. So I've got the entry point address here. Uh, it's, all, it, it's also uh, possible to detect the uh, entry address uh, by using the LM command. For example, uh, if I don't know about the process ID, I can use the uh, that process list and we can find its process ID here. So I used LM uh, for user mode modules and I need it for a process ID 14E4 in hexadecimal format. So I, I uh, run it and as you can see, uh, this module starts from here. Its entry point is here and uh, this is the main module. 
Uh, we also have NTDL and kernel 32 here, but we are not interested in, in these uh, modules. We're only interested in uh, the uh, main module, hello world module. So uh, let's uh, write a monitor Uh, for the execution uh, that uh, starts uh, starts monitoring memory uh, from this address uh, from the start of the page and ends on the last byte of the page uh, for the process ID uh, 14e4 and in the S script I uh, write uh, instruction executed at uh, we can use both uh, RIP and complex no different here uh but just to run it uh, uh now i run it and as you can see uh we got the executions here each time any instructions got executed in this address range we are notified here uh and uh, the the log uh, the log shows the actual address that executed these uh, instructions now uh, i want to intercept the context of the of this process so i uh, clear clear it completely clear it and uh, this time on my uh, script i uh, write a pause function to just uh, pause the uh target debuggy so i run it again and as you can see we arrived in the middle of the process once this address range got executed we are in the middle of uh, uh, its execution and now we can change the context we have the registers we can uh change the the flow of the program we can uh, patch something in this process and we can do uh main thing with this as we are in the context of the process in, and executing in the main module that's it i think uh it's enough we will see more examples about uh short circuiting uh events uh later in this series